Hello everybody and welcome to, what are we on? Oh, I forgot. Lesson five. There we go. Lesson five of our Armor of God series. Now today we're not going to add a new piece of armor. What we're going to do is we're going to take this opportunity to review the pieces of armor that we have already put on. And we're going to do that in the form of a game. As you can see, I have the board set up behind me. For those of you that have had me in class before, you know we love to play Jeopardy in class. And we usually set it up on the computer and we have the fun music and all of that. But we can't really do that right now. So we're going to do kind of a modified Jeopardy. And so we still are going to have our categories and we're going to have our point values. But we won't be able to do teams because you guys are just at home watching this. And so you'll just be playing for yourself to see how many points you can earn. And then if you want, you can always uh, call your fellow classmates and see how they did and compare your, yourself to them if you want to. But um, anyway, so that's how we're going to do it today. We will have, what do we have, five categories? Yeah, five categories. We have from our introductory lesson, so you know those questions might be about a certain man who might have written the book we're studying. Hmm. And then we have some questions about the belt of truth lesson. And then the breastplate, we have a few questions. And then our shoes of peace. And then we have a miscellaneous category, so you don't know what those questions will be about. So that's always exciting. Now, I know when we usually play this, because we have teams, we take turns, and, and then you get to pick which category and what point value you want. So we're going to just do that differently, and we're just going to work across the board. So we're going to start in our intro, and we're going to do the $100 question. And then we'll move to the belt $100 question, and we'll just work across the board. And so that I don't get lost, I have my handy-dandy eraser. So as we go through those questions, I'll erase them so I can keep track of where I am. Now, what's, the, what's another thing? Oh, um, if you need some time to think about it, you can always hit the pause button, remember. So I'll read the question, and if you need time, push pause, and then unpause it when you're ready to hear the answer. Okay? So I think we're ready to go. I think that's all the intro I wanted to do because I don't want to give anything away since hopefully all the really good, meaty, important stuff is covered in the questions. All right, so let's get started. I'm excited. Um, okay, Introduct bleh. introduction for 100 points. Okay, your question is, who wrote the book of Ephesians? So think about that while I erase. Okay, I hope you're ready. Who wrote the book? It was Paul. Yay! So if you got that right, give yourself 100 points. Good job. All right. So now we're going to go to the belt for 100. All right. List one thing the belt of truth does for us. So think about that. One thing the belt of truth does for us. So you could have listed any number of things, right? Um, let's see. It supports our core, right? Because that's, we've got to, um, we've got to have a really strong base for our faith. And so the belt of truth is going to do that for us because that is the truth, right? If we don't know the truth, then how can we live the truth, right? So it's, it's core. It's so important. That's something it does for us. It also helps, um, a stand firm against the devil. You could have said that. It um, it connects to our breastplate, right? Because our well, and I well, I might give this away, but we'll see if you can remember this. So when we put on our breastplate of righteousness, it's all about living right, doing the right things, living how God wants us to live. So we can't do that until first we have on the belt. So it connects with the breastplate, and so it gives the breastplate some somewhere to connect, something to connect to. We have to connect to that truth. Um, what else does it do? What else could you have said? Oh, it, it's also um, where our sword can fit, right? You could say our sword, and we haven't really gotten to that lesson yet, but you could have said that if you wanted to because we did mention that in the lesson. And what else? It can, um, well, I mean, for the soldier, it, it, held up their tunic so that they could move quicker. So if you said something to the effect of the belt can help us to um, 
have freedom of movement or be able to move in the direction that God wants us to use, that would be perfectly acceptable too. So any of those answers would have been acceptable. And so if you answered any of that, you can give yourself 100 points. Okay. Are you guys ready for number three? We're moving on to the breastplate lesson. Okay. Breastplate for 100 points. And the first one is, the first question is, what does the breastplate of righteousness do for us? Hmm, let's think about that. Hmm, think about what it did for the Roman soldier and what does it do for us? It protects our heart. Or if you said it protects our minds, because remember when we talk about the heart in a spiritual sense, we're, we're really talking about our mind, right? And our, our being. Okay, so if you got that one, give yourself 100 points. All right, and I hope you have your calculators ready because I'm sure you're going to need those to add up all of these points at the end. You guys are probably going to get lots and lots of good points. Okay, now we are on to the shoes for 100 points. Okay, what do our shoes do for our feet? Okay. What do your shoes do? Well, you could have answered any number of things. You could have said, well, they protect our feet. They keep our feet warm. They support our uh, support us, right? Support our feet and give us endurance so that we can go the long haul, run the big race, um, any number of those things. So any of those answers would have been acceptable for 100 points. So great job. Okay, now for the fun category, the miscellaneous category. All right, miscellaneous for 100. How many books are in the Bible? And that means in the Old Testament plus the New Testament. So the whole Bible, how many books? All right, you ready? If you said 66, you were right. There are 66 books in the Bible. And I'm not going to break it down because hmm, there just might be a question coming up about how many might be in the old and how many might be in the new. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. All right, so we, we've done the 100-point questions. I hope you already have 500 points, but even if you don't, that's okay. Um, okay, so let's move on to our 200-point questions, and we're going to go back to introduction for 200. List one thing you know about Paul. Ooh, wow, gee, you only have to list one thing. Okay. Wow, there's so many things we've already learned about Paul, right? Let's see. He used to be called Saul. He persecuted Christians. He was stopped on the road by, uh, by a bright light, and Jesus spoke to him. He um, was taught by Ananias. He got baptized after he learned the truth. He changed. He went on missionary journeys. He preached Jesus. He visited the city of Ephesus on his second missionary journey, and that was one of the churches he established. He established lots of different churches. He wrote lots of letters that we study, including the one we're studying now. Um, what else? I mean, you, you could name, if, if you know other stuff about Paul, that is wonderful. So hopefully you got at least one of those things written down, and then you can give yourself, we're at 200 points. All right. So let's go on to the belt for 200. And that question is, where do we find spiritual truth? Okay, where do we find spiritual truth? It's certainly not in your math book, right? That's just mathematical truths. Where do we find spiritual truth? In the Bible, in God's word, right? We don't find it in ourselves. We don't find it in other people. We don't find it in school books. We can only find truth in God's word, which is the Bible. So good job. I'm sure you guys all got that one right. Okay, the breastplate for 200. Here we go. What is righteousness? Now, if you were paying attention just a minute ago, I already answered that question for you. Hmm. Yep, I did. So let's see how many of you were paying attention. That is correct. I heard somebody say it. I knew they did. It's right living, right? It's living right. Righteousness is living right. It's living your life in line with what God wants us to do. 
So excellent. Good job. Those of you that answered that, good job. Okay. We're on shoes now for 200. Turn my book here. 200. Where does the world look for peace? Hmm. Where does the world look for peace? Okay, that one might, might, might have been a little difficult for some of you. But if you said any of these things, the world looks in worldly places, at worldly things, right? And you could have been even more specific and talked about some of the things we talked about during that lesson. You could have said they look for peace in being popular or having the latest gadgets, being the popular athlete, uh, knowing the right people, living in the right house, driving the right car, wearing the right clothes, right? All worldly, temporary things is where the world looks for peace. But as we learned from when we looked back in Ecclesiastes, right? If you remember, which was written by David's son, Solomon, he looked everywhere in the world and he had everything he wanted, did anything he wanted and said, it's all pointless. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity, right? Okay, so, and then he tells us where we find peace. But I'm not going to answer that because, hmm, maybe there'll be a question about that. We'll find out. All right. Oh, back to my favorite category, miscellaneous. Okay, so miscellaneous for 200. How many books are in the New Testament? Mm, that's the song we're learning. So if you know all of that, or if you've learned all of that song already, then you should be able to sing it real quick in your head and count those up, and you'll know how many books are in the New Testament. Okay, I hope you paused if you needed to, because I'm getting ready to give you the answer. In the New Testament, there are 27 books. Good job, 27. So we know there's 66 in the whole Bible and 27 in the New Testament. So if you can do your math, you can figure out how many are in the old. And I bet that'll come in handy here in just a few minutes. All right, well, we just wiped out that 200-point category, didn't we? So let's move on to the 300-point category. All right, introduction for 300 points. On which missionary journey did Paul first travel to Ephesus? Hmm, which one was it? Well, you have a one in three shot in getting this because he went on three missionary journeys. So was it his first, second, or third? If you said second, you are correct. So good job on the second missionary journey is when he first visited Ephesus. And then he came back on the third journey and spent a couple of years with them. So he got to know them really well. Good job. Okay. Our belt of truth for 200. Nope. Yeah, 300. Oops, sorry. 300. Okay. Why do we put on the belt of truth first? Why is that the first thing we put on? Okay, you ready? It is because if we don't know the truth first, then how can we live the truth? How can we know how to act, how to speak, how to behave? We can't, right? Until we first know the truth. We can't live and act out the truth. That is why we put on the belt first, because we got to know God's word. We got to know what he expects. We have to know that truth first so that we can then act on it and do the things that God wants us to be doing. So, good job. That was 300 points. Awesome. Awesome. All right, the breastplate for 300. Name one way Satan tries to attack our mind. Hmm. One way Satan tries to attack our mind. Now, if you recall in that particular lesson, we talked about a lot of ways that he attacks us. He attacks through our emotions and our conscience and our will. And so you could have named any number of things in this one. So I'm just going to throw out a bunch of them. So if you named any of them, then you just got yourself 300 points. Okay. He tries to get us to believe lies about God and lies about God's word. He tries to remind us of all the things we've done wrong and make us think that we are unworthy of God and that there's no way God could love us. 
He tries to make us feel like we have to be perfect when we certainly don't because we are human and God knows that and that's why God has given us grace. Um, he tries to get us to believe in ourselves so much that we think we don't even need God, right? He um, tries to get us to make other things a priority, um, sports, our jobs, school, anything. We put anything in front of God. And that's okay is what Satan wants us to believe. So all of those things are ways that Satan can attack our mind. And you may have even come up with something else. And as long as, even if we didn't discuss it in class, as long as it's a way that Satan tries to attack our minds, then you give yourself 300 points. All right, excellent. Okay, shoes for 300. All right, where can we find true peace. Hmm. Where do we find true peace? Well, our last question was all about, in, in this category, our last question was all about where the world looks for peace. Where do we find true peace? Hmm. We find it in God and in his word and in following his word, right? We find it, the shoes of peace, or the shoes of the gospel of peace. Let me fix that. And remember we said gospel means good news and the good news was salvation through Jesus Christ that we all have access to because Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins. So that is where we will, it's the only place we'll find peace. Okay, good job. Okay, miscellaneous for 300. I bet some of you already know what this question is before I even read it. I bet you do. How many books, go ahead and finish are in the Old Testament. Good job. All right. 300 points. Who did the math? 66 minus 27 equals 39. Excellent. Good job. So 39 books in the Old, 27 in the New, 66 in the whole thing. All right. Excellent. Good job. And we are moving back to intro for 400. We're just flying through this, aren't we? It's great. All right. 400 intro question. Where was Paul when he wrote Ephesians. Hmm. Where was Paul? Well, he wasn't in Ephesus, was he? No, he left there already. And you could have either said he was in prison, because I did say that, um, under house arrest, because he was on, he was being held in his house. So jail, prison, under house arrest, any of those would have been a fine answer. Or you could have even said in Rome, because that is where he was when he was in jail, prison, under house arrest. He was in Rome. Okay, good job. All right, to the belt. The belt for 400. Okay. Does the truth ever change? Hmm. Hmm. Does it ever change? Absolutely not, right? God's truth, spiritual truth, never changes. It is what God says, and that is it, and his word doesn't change, right? What he says is what he means, and what he says he does, he will do. And what he promises, he will keep those promises. So truth doesn't change. Excellent. Okay, the breastplate for 400. Um, is it okay for us to just appear righteous on the outside? Hmm. Hmm. We sure can look good on the outside, can't we? We can fix ourselves up and show up at church and do our Bible lessons and answer the questions and sing and appear to have our head bowed in prayer. But if on the inside we are not thinking good thoughts and not paying attention and we're grumbling inside the whole time, then we're not being righteous on the inside, are we? And God knows that. So... Is it okay? Is it okay for us to just appear righteous on the outside? Oh, absolutely not. We need to make sure we're righteous all the way through, inside and the outside. Right? Good job. All right. Shoes for 400. All right. Without God's peace, how will we feel? Hmm. Hmm. Without peace, how will we feel? Without God's peace, how will we feel? Well, you could answer this in a lot of different ways, too. We may feel anxious, we worried, afraid, uh, confused, unsure, unhappy, 
and there's probably lots of other synonyms for that. Lots of other things that we can figure out we would feel that way. I hope that I didn't go blank there. My computer just went blank, but I hope it stayed on me. I don't know. If, if it goes blank and you just hear me talking and you see something funny, then just ignore it and pretend like nothing happened. It's all good, right? Okay, so any of those words or any synonyms to those words would be fantastic answer and give yourself 400 points. Okay, miscellaneous for 400. Okay, here's a good one. What are the first five books of the New Testament? Hmm. I hope you've been working on your song. And if you have, then this will be a piece of cake. This will be the easiest 400 points you have ever gotten, right? If you've been working on your song. You ready? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts are the first five books, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Very good, I know. In the song, we learned one other book, right? We learned, and the letter to the Romans. But I only asked you for the first five, so good job. All right, we are almost done. That's crazy. We are on the big 500-point question, so this is where it gets real, people. Are you ready? Okay, the introduction for 500. What can we learn from Paul's life? Ooh. That's a very good question. There are lots of things we can learn from Paul's life. From our introductory lesson, though, do you guys remember the big lesson we learned from Paul? Remember Paul was persecuting Christians, and then he saw the light, and Jesus spoke to him and said, Why are you persecuting me? And Paul thought he was doing the right thing. But between Jesus speaking to him, appearing to him, and then Ananias coming and teaching him, he learned that that's not what God wanted him to do. And he learned the truth and he humbled himself and he changed and he was baptized and then he went about preaching all of Jesus all over the place. And so that was our big takeaway from our first lesson was we need to learn from Paul that if we find out we are doing something wrong, then we need to be just like Paul and we need to be humble about it, and we need to pray, and we need to change, and we need to not act that way anymore, not do whatever it is we were doing anymore, and we need to be different, be a changed person, be a better person, and follow God. So that was a big takeaway. Now, there are other things that we can learn from Paul is how to be um, a good Christian, right? He went through lots and lots of different trials throughout his whole life. Once he became a Christian and started preaching, he was stoned, he was shipwrecked. I mean, he went through all sorts of things. But he still believed in God and remained true to God even when tough times were on him. So we could learn that from Paul. We can learn about how important it is to um, surround yourself with other Christians because everywhere he went, he sought Christians out. He sought people out that were similar, believed in similar ways to him. Now, he also preached to those who didn't believe the same way he did, because that's important too. But in order for him to be able to do that, he needed to be strengthened by being around fellow Christians as well. So we can learn that from Paul. And so if you had something else, that is wonderful. I love the thinking outside the box that you guys can do sometimes, because you've learned about Paul before. I'm sure many of you have and may have other ideas about lessons we can learn from Paul. Okay, so now we're on the belt for 500. Okay, belt for 500. Why do we need to put on this armor of God? Hmm. Why do we need to even bother putting it on? I'm sure you know this answer. We've mentioned this, I think, pretty much every week. Maybe not lesson one, but maybe so. I can't remember. I'd have to look at it again. But definitely, all the other lessons since then, we have answered this question. We need to put it on because we are at war, right? We are at war, but not a physical war. We are in a spiritual battle against principalities and powers of darkness, against Satan and all those that are working with him. And he is trying his hardest to get us to believe him instead of God. So that is why it is so important for us to wear this armor every single day because he's not going to stop attacking us, is he? He's going to try every way he can 
because he doesn't even need us to believe everything that he wants us to believe. He, he, he just needs us to believe one lie about God, right? One lie about God's word. And then that's all that matters to him. So we've got to be on guard. All right, so that's why we need to have this armor on. Okay, you guys ready? We only have three more questions. Okay, the breastplate for 500. Why do you think God gave us access to this armor? Hmm. Why did God give us access to the armor? Well, I know you guys know this answer, and you probably already said it, because he loves us so very much. He loves us so much that even before creation, he had a plan for mankind. He had a plan for us to send Jesus to die on the cross for forgiveness of our sins so that we could have salvation and we can live with him forever up in heaven one day as long as we follow his word and do what he wants us to do and, and asks us to do in his word in the Bible while we're here on earth because he loves us. He doesn't want us to be lost. And so that's why he gave us this armor. That's why we have the Bible. That's why he inspired all of these men to write these things down so that we could read it and we could get to know him and know what he wants for us and for our lives because he loves us that much. And that is a blessing to be loved by our creator so much. And so hopefully that inspires all of us to love him back just as much or try to love him as much as he loves us. I don't think we can quite get there, but we sure can work hard at it to love him as much as we possibly can. So good job. All right. Shoes for 500. Here we go. Name the three men who had on their shoes of peace when they were thrown into a fiery furnace. Hmm. You guys remember the story we read last week? I bet you do. And so you could say Rack Shack and Benny if you've ever watched the Veggie Tales, but their real names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So I hope you got those right. And it's okay if you didn't really know how to pronounce them correctly. We'll still give you the 500 points, right? Absolutely. Okay. And our final question for today in the miscellaneous category is, name all six pieces of the armor of God. And if you've been singing the song or if you learned the song, this should be another easy 500 points that to earn, right? So here, think about it for a second. Okay, and we let's sing the answer. We'll just sing the first the first part of the song just to get all the pieces of the armor, all six pieces listed. Belt, breastplate, shoes, and shield, helmet, and sword. There you go. Belt, breastplate, shoes, shield, helmet, and sword. Those are your six pieces of armor. Excellent, yay! So now if you want, you can pause. And you can add up all your points and figure out how many you got. Or you can just wait till we, we're all done. We're almost done. Okay. So I hope you found that you have remembered a lot from our lessons. And if not, that's okay too, right? That's okay. You can always watch the lessons again. You can say, hmm, I didn't remember as much as I'd like to. Maybe I better take notes next time. And you can write some things down or however it is that you learn. Because we all do learn in different ways, right? Okay, so before we finish, I just want to make sure that we're keeping on top of our New Testament song and learning all of those books. Remember, we've gotten up to, oh, what time is that? Nope, we didn't do that one. We didn't learn Titus and Philemon yet. It was right before that. So it was, uh, we're just going to have to sing it so I can remember where we got to. Okay, so let's sing from where we started up to where we ended, and then we'll add the next piece. Okay, so you guys ready? All right. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and the letter to the Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. And I believe that's where we ended, right? Okay, so we're going to add four more books. Okay, you ready? So here's how it goes. First and second Timothy, 
Titus and Philemon. And that's it. So just those four more to add to the rest. And then we'll have a bunch learned. I'll try to count as we sing it and that way we know where we are. Because it's always good to keep track of where we are so we know how many we've got done and how many we have left to go. All right. So let's go ahead and sing through all the way up to Philemon, which is the one, the four we just added, First and Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, and we'll see how we're doing. Okay, you ready? Okay. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and the letter to the Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus and Philemon. Okay, now I was kind of looking down every once in a while because I was doing stick tally so that I could keep track so I knew how many we had. So we've got 5, 10, 15, 16, 18. So, so far we have learned 18 books of the New Testament. So, all right, my math kids, let's do some math again. How many books are in the New Testament? 27, right? And we've learned 18. So how many do we have left? Nine. Very good. We have nine books left. Okay. And I think that's it. I know I was just I was just looking down to calculate in my head to make sure I did my math right because sometimes you know you you know an answer is right, but you all of a sudden once you say it out loud, you go, wait. Is that right? Did I do that right? So yeah, it's nine books. We have nine books left to go. So over the next couple of weeks, we will get those done and we will have all 27 learned. And that will be an amazing, wonderful feat that you all have accomplished. And I'll be so proud. Okay, so I hope you had fun and we will start working on our next piece of armor in our next lesson next week. So thanks for joining. I hope you guys had a wonderful week. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. And I will see you in the new year.